This is John Steele reporting on Adventure. I was going to title this yarn Girl of the Golden West, but somebody else got there first with that label a long time ago. Anyway, the story takes place in the desert of Australia. It involves a redhead named Rosie, a guy who tried to double-cross her, a million dollars in gold, and a dingo pack. I call this transcribed yarn Three Minus Two. The middle of Australia represents one of the biggest and about the worst deserts on the face of this earth. In texture, it's something like the big salt flats of Utah. It was once a big inland sea. Right after gold was found in California back in 1848, it was also discovered in Australia, and they had their big bonanza just like ours. There's still a lot of gold there, and in parts of western Australia, you'll still find wooden sidewalks, swinging doors, and miners in red shirts packing guns. I remember you had to duck real fast on a Saturday night when you heard six guns blazing. After World War II, a lot of our guys went back there to settle. A few more went back there to look for gold. But the gold is up there in that desert. You'd say it was no place for a girl, nor is it. But one gal went up there. She'd been raised in the state of Oregon, and the rugged desert of Australia didn't scare her. She went there with her husband, a guy named Panting, Leo Panting. They had a partner, a big fellow called Snowy. And when they found gold, Snowy had ideas. Just like home. Yeah? Those dingoes, they sound like coyotes. Yeah. <laughs> Funny, huh? We're rich, baby. That's just what I was thinking. You, me, and Leo. Maybe a million dollars, huh? Yeah, it could be. Leo says it's a rich vein. Over there sleeping. How can he sleep? He's tired. He does most of the work. I do my share, Rosie. Well, you ought to do more. More? You're a big guy. Leo's small. It's just hard luck. Well, he's got a right to be tired. Let him sleep. Okay by me. Throw me a cigarette. Here. Thanks. I keep thinking. But how to spend your share? Don't make sense. What don't? Three-way split. Made sense when we agreed? Yeah, I know. The agreement stands. You and Leo two-thirds, me one-third. That's right. That ain't fair. That's the way it is, Snowy. We ought to figure a better way. The agreement stands. I put up the money to pay expenses. Leo and you did the rest. That makes it a three-way partnership. You and Leo hog two-thirds between you. You're his wife. Look, be happy with what you'll get. You know? Yes, I know. Me and you. I know what you've had in your mind for a long time. Why not? You're not my type, Snowy. And he is? That's why I married him. That lousy little shrimp. I wouldn't say that if I were you. Why? You might get mad? No, I might. <laughs> you heard me. Sure, baby, I heard you. Leo's not a big guy, but he's a man. Going to sleep, leaving you with me? Why don't you go to sleep, too? Maybe I could, then. I'm not tired. A day's work don't knock me out. Try doing a day's work tomorrow, and then we'll find out. You're beautiful, Rosie. What? I said you're beautiful. I will be when I get back home, start living it up. Like you are now, in a man's shirt and slacks, your red hair shining in the moonlight. Your real beauty, Rosie, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean, Snowy. How about it, baby? Listen, get your filthy hands off of me. Oh, a kiss, just a little kiss. What's wrong with that? Maybe you understand that. Yeah, I understand, baby. Well, that's fine. But you shouldn't have done that, Rosie. I'll do more than that if you ever touch me again. Like what? You know why I wear this gun? Snakes, wild dogs. No, you. <laughs> now keep that in mind. You're still awake? I feel safer when I'm awake. Yeah, you don't know what it means. What? Always being with you. It gets monotonous, I'd say. Seeing you with him. Oh, look, why don't you sleep it off? All these weeks, me getting ideas, thinking you had the same ideas. I never gave you any ideas. Sometimes, the way you looked at me. You must have imagined it. Yeah. Now, just forget about it. No dice, huh, Rosie? No dice. Not any time? Never. Just you and him, huh? 
Just me and Leo. And two-thirds of all this gold. Only it can't work out that way. What? Come here, baby. Oh. Give me that gun. Oh. All right, Rosie. Okay, sweetheart, now we'll see. Leo? Shut up. What, what are you going to do? First, take care of Leo. Oh. Little guy no more. He's dead, Leo's dead. You killed him. No three-way split, Rosie. Just me. He's dead. My Leo's dead. <laughs> I'll teach you. Oh, Leo, honey. honey. Get away from him. Leo. Get up. Leo. Get away from him. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I'll touch you, baby. You killed him. Don't you understand? Yeah, I understand. You killed him. That's okay. Never knew what happened. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Enough of the waterworks. Let me go. Let go. It's been building up, baby. Let me go. It's been building up all these weeks. <laughs> Leo, Leo, honey. I kept saying if Rosie gets to like me, okay. She can give Leo the brush. But you didn't like me, Rosie. He's lying there so quiet. He'll never talk to me again. He'll never talk to me again. It's the way it's got to be, Rosie. Nobody else can have you. Just me, nobody else. Can you hear me, baby? <laughs> Just me, Rosie. Just me now. <laughs> They say you get used to anything. After a while, it looked like Rosie had gotten accustomed to the idea her husband was dead. She stopped crying, and after Leo had been buried in the sand, she smoked a cigarette. Snowy watched her very cautiously. He made sure she didn't have her hands on a gun. He wasn't sure what to do about her. She had loved her Leo, and she hated him. There's a law against murder down in Australia, and Rosie could accuse him of that crime and bring the police to the grave where Leo was buried. Snowy didn't like the picture of that situation, so he watched Rosie very carefully, wondered what was going on in her mind. Yeah, lousy dingoes, why don't they shut up? What? This desert. It's time we got out of it. I've been thinking. Yeah? No use crying over spill milk? No, that's right, baby. Leo's a nice guy, sweet guy. Yeah, sure. But maybe you wouldn't have fitted in with, uh, with, you know, things. Now you're talking, Rosie. Well, you know what I mean, like New York and Paris and London and all them places. Yeah. Leo wanted a ranch. Me, I've seen all the ranches I want to see. Oh, baby, I like what you're saying. We can say he just died in the desert. Sure we can. And that's what we'll say. Poor Leo, yeah. He died out in the desert. I'm young, can't spend my life moping. And we got a million bucks to spend, Rosie, you and me. Want to pour me some coffee? Anything you want, baby. Anything. Mm. Me in a mink coat. I can see in one, Rosie. I'll spend $10,000 on one. Here, drink your coffee. Thanks. All the time, Rosie. All the time we'll be dolled up. You and your mink coats, me and my tailored suits, living it up. Ritz Carlton and all them joints. <laughs> Doesn't seem possible we got all that gold. What do we do with it? Yeah, in the morning, I'll fill another couple of sacks. We'll take back all we can, then register the claim. After that, I don't know. Maybe we work the mine, maybe we sell it. Sell it? I want to start living. Yeah, we sell. You go down and get more gold first thing in the morning, then we get out of here. Sure. <laughs> What's the matter, Snowy? It's okay, baby. You're not fighting me anymore. Who wants to fight all the time? <laughs> goes crazy, Rosie, you know what I mean? Stop talking about it. Yeah, only I want that you understand. I do. He was crazy to bring you along. Gave me a chance to fall in love with you, baby. I know. I'll be good to you, Rosie. I'll make you happy. Nothing will be too good for you. Just so long as you don't get sickening. I can't stand a guy who gets sickening. I mean I'll take good care of you. See, you do, huh? What'll it be, baby? We get married, huh? I'd want to marry. I'm that kind of a guy. <laughs> you work fast, don't you? I've met a guy who works so fast. I'm nuts about you, Rosie. Hey, wait a minute, you're hurting me. Don't hold me so tight. I want to go on breathing. Yeah, I didn't mean to hurt you. You're a rough guy, Snowy. 
You're awful rough with a girl. Do you know that? Maybe... Maybe it's the way you like a guy to be, huh? Huh, Rosie? Huh, baby? <laughs> Here, gold nuggets. <laughs> What's the matter, baby? I was just wondering. Wondering what? What we're going to do with all this gold. We're going back with it. What makes you think so? What do you mean? What makes you think we're going anywhere? Hey, wait a minute. We're staying. You want to stay okay, me? I'm going back. But you're not. What is this? How are you going to drive that Jeep without any gas in it? Gas? We got plenty of gas. It's gone. What? It's gone. What are you talking about? I emptied the cans. I spread the gasoline across the ground. It's all gone. Evaporated. You did what? I just told you, Snow. We finished on the gasoline. You, you, you threw it away? Yeah. We're staying here with Leo. You and me with Leo and all this gold. I get it now. Now it's too late. Pretending you'd forgotten Leo. Pretending you liked me just so I let down my guard. Leo was my guy and I was crazy about I'll it. I'll kill you. You do anything you like. I'll break in small pieces. You kill me. Do anything you like. I don't care anymore. But you're going to stay here alone. <laughs> oh, I'll teach you. And I'll teach you, mister. Shut up. Makes a monkey out of me. Makes me trust her. My back's turned. She throws away the gasoline. I'll show you. (laughs) Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> you too, baby. I was just looking at the stream. It's awful dry. Leo said it would dry up altogether in a few days and no more water till the spring rains. You figure to stay here, huh? Till the end of time. For you and for me, like it was for Leo. I don't get one thing. For instance. While I was away, you could have taken the Jeep and driven off. You could have left me here to starve and die. I thought of that. I bet you did. Only I knew I couldn't make it alone. You'd lose your way, huh? Yeah. You could have got back there and registered the claim. I thought of that too. Why'd you do this, baby? Impulse? I thought of Leo when I had to do something, anything at all, so I got rid of the gasoline. Just like a crazy dame, huh? Okay, you want to stay here, you stay. Me, I go. What? It's not all desert. There's mountain country, bushlands. And there's fresh water 20 miles from here. We filled up there on the way here, remember? You'll never make it, not walking. A million bucks in gold is waiting to be spent. And you think I won't make 50 miles across this country? You, you think you can? Do I think? I know. Without me? Solo, just me. I wouldn't trust a dame like you no more. You spoil it for yourself, Rosie. So you stay here with Leo. Why don't I kill you? Nah. I wouldn't shoot a dame. I don't have to. How long will you last out here all alone? A few days, a week? Then curtains. You'll go nuts, baby. You'll run out there in the desert. Get ideas about making it alone, and that'll be the end. Too bad, Rosie. Too bad. Enough water to see me 20 miles. That's all I need. I'm on my way, Rosie. Have fun here. Have real fun. A million dollars in gold can do that to a guy. Old timers who had crossed that desert had used mules and burros, same as they did in this country. Nobody, as far as I know, had ever made 500 miles of desert on foot. But Snowy had that in mind when he set out. On the other hand, maybe it made some sense. If he stayed in that camp, he had to die anyhow, just like Rosie would die. She watched him walk away into the desert, into the blinding glare of the sun. Then she picked up a couple of sharp rocks and put one in each of her pockets. When Snowy glanced back, he saw her following him, her hands in the pockets of her slacks. He grinned back at her. Go back, baby. I told you once, Snowy, you're not going anywhere. Go on back, Rosie. You can't keep up with me. You're not leaving. You don't seem to understand. I'm on my way. Too bad it had to be this way, Rosie. If you look over that way, you'll see what I mean. Huh? Where? I don't see anything. Keep looking. You'll see what I mean. I don't see anything. The girl couldn't afford to miss, and she didn't. She found her target twice. The rock struck Snowy's face. He staggered, his face covered with blood. In a split second, the girl sprang him. She kicked him in the stomach, and the man sprawled on the ground, groaning. It took Rosie just two more seconds to lug the man's gun from its holster. 
Whenever you're ready, you can get up. Uh, You'll live for a while, anyway. Oh, lousy days. You can't trust them. Not this one, you can't. Uh, I'm sick. My heart bleeds for you. You shouldn't have done this, Rosie. I'm walking back to camp, and I'm taking your water back with me. You please yourself what you do. Yeah, my face, you cut it. We're in trouble. Oh. You want to take a look at some real trouble? Dingo pack. I didn't see him come this way. Lousy dingoes. Standing there looking at us. They're going to do more than look at us. Give me that gun. You stay where you are. These dogs will attack any minute. Maybe. More like a bunch of wolves, just like wolves. I'm going to try and shoot that one, see what happens. Look out! They kill one. Seems scared. Give me that rod. I'll take care of they it. They won't go away. As long as they don't attack. Come on, we'll get back to camp. You walk in front of me. Look. I said walk in front of me. I got to watch you, too. We're in a jam. You better walk slowly. Your Australian dingo is no former domestic pooch gone wild. He's a ferocious killer from way back. He looks like a wolf and acts like one. He usually runs with a pack. A pack will operate near a big sheep station or in the bushlands. It will seldom go into the desert. When it does, there's some good reason. It's probably following an expedition, hoping to attack the horses. In lean country, a dingo pack will attack anything or anyone. The pack that threatened Snowy and Rosie numbered about 20. And the animal Rosie had killed just wasn't enough to go around. Hold up a minute, will you, Snowy? Stop, I said, or I'll shoot. I ain't gonna stop. Come on. Hey. You would, wouldn't you? All right, come on. Now get going. And I'm holding this gun on you, don't forget. All right, come on, Next come on. Next time I won't miss. Well, come on, come on. The I'm coming, are... I'm coming. Big dame with a gun in her hand. Oh. Yeah. Hot, ain't it? Yeah, it's hot. Well, come on, walk. They look hungry. Want some water? No, thanks. Come on, get it. I'm saving it. <laughs> Go on, take a drink. Oh, you thought you could pull me, huh? <laughs> hey. I'm warning you, Snowy. I'm a good shot, and you know it. And I just keep your hands off of me and keep your distance and start walking. Lousy dame. Come How much on. farther is it? Come on, walk. I'm walking. Yeah. You can have some water. No, I don't want any water. Get moving, get moving. Go on. Take a drink. I said I didn't want any water. Now, will you get going? I want to make it back to camp. Come on, Rosie. Take one little drink. On me. Listen, they're getting closer and closer. Well, come on, walk. Come on. They're closing in. Will you pick it up? Come on, walk. Walk, walk, walk. Force. They'll tear us to pieces. All right, what'd you do with my gun and Leo's? Put them in a the jeep. I unloaded them. Where are the bullets? I got them. Get the guns in. Now you're making sense. Walk to the jeep. I'll cover you. Okay, watch them lousy dogs. I'll watch. I'll load both guns over here, Rosie. Okay, don't waste time. It gives you a different feeling when you got a gun in your hand, baby. Bet it makes you feel like a man again. Watch it later. I am. Bullseye, baby. Who taught you to shoot like that? You watch them now. That's something I can't bear to look at. They're hungry. Maybe they'll go away. They won't go far. They'll hang around. Do we have to kill them all? Every time they look like they're going to rush us, we kill one, maybe two. That'll hold them for a while. We don't want to waste the bullets. That big brown one. Yeah, I see him. He's not eating. He just stands there looking at us like he's trying to figure something out. Maybe he's figuring they ought to rush us. I can almost read what's going on in his mind. What's he looking at now? I don't see a thing. Yeah, they're scared, all right. Look. Yeah, yeah, a dust cloud. Somebody riding a horse. Just one guy. 
One guy riding a horse scaring a dingo pack? Don't add up. There's only one man coming. Yeah, they must have heard the shooting. Yeah, that's it. Whatever it is, I'm awful glad to see him. Wait a minute. All right, put those guns down now. Now, listen, baby. No, you listen. They hang you for murder in this country, and you murdered my Leo. Now drop those guns before I drop you. Yeah, that guy has a horse. I could use that horse. You heard what I said? You won't shoot me, Rose. Don't make me prove it. Yeah, those lousy dogs. If they hadn't come this way, there'd have been no shooting. And that guy wouldn't have heard the shots. Lousy dingoes. A million bucks in gold. And you think you're going to see me turned over to the cops? I'll show you. No, 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 no. Okay, mister. I can take care of you, too. Are you all right? I'm okay. My name's Steele, John Steele. I'm Rosie Panning. You American? Yeah. Let's take a look at this guy. Who is he? He murdered my husband. Hey, he's alive. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah. How'd you get here? An expedition. We're camped in the hills. I heard shooting. Some dingoes were here. Yeah, I know. We killed about 30 of them. They finally left us. <laughs> You'll be okay now. He killed my Leo. He killed him. Leo never had a chance. He was asleep. That'll be taken care of. Uh, help me. Uh, I need a doctor. You'll get one, chum. My friends will be here in a few minutes. I got a million dollars in gold, pal. What do you think of that? Leo, I... I told him not to bring a dame. <laughs> Australia is a big land. It draws all kinds of people to it. A land of big opportunity always does draw all kinds of people. There's nothing American about it, and yet you feel a sort of kinship with the places and the people. You feel at home. Rosie never did come home again. She stayed out there where her Leo was buried. She sold the claim, and she's a rich gal in dollars or pounds. Maybe someday she will drift back to Oregon. Anyway, she's the only gal I ever ran across who struck a million-dollar gold mine. And I hope you like hearing about it. What was I doing in the Gibson Desert when I met her? I'd been investigating the scene of what could be the dusty remains of an ancient civilization. But that's another story. I'll tell you about it sometime. Be around next week, huh? For a story that takes place in North Africa. The gal in this story is a cross between Elizabeth Taylor, the Queen of Iran, and Marilyn Monroe. She's my candidate for the most beautiful dame in the world. We had a lot of fun together. There were three of us. The gal, a guy named Cardu, and yours truly. It's a real adventure I like to call High Test. Heard with me on today's transcribed John Steele adventure were Mary Ashworth and Charlie Holmes. I'm Don Douglas. So until next week then, and High Test. Remember, adventure is where you find it, but don't look for it. It may find you. John Steele, Adventurer, was brought to you through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.